Welcome to video 2 on how to automate any EEP model train simulator layout with Lua but without writing any code yourself. All that is needed is to specify your layout and this is example 2. In the previous uh, video we had this simple layout and in this video we'll add another block and we will add another train. So on this layout two trains will drive around. On block one and four we drive counterclockwise and on block two and three we drive clockwise. This is how it looks when the two trains are happily driving around and obviously yeah, they will have to wait for each other here on these tracks. So when this passenger train came in and when this blue diesel does not have a waiting time it could go. Uh, yeah, there it goes. It waits for the end of the train to reach this sensor over here. Well, let's have a look how this uh, layout can be configured. Without writing code, we only have to fill in some data. Always the first step is to decide on the blocks that we want to have for our automatic train traffic. In this layout, it seems logical to have these four blocks. One and four are the counterclockwise traffic and blocks two and three are the clockwise traffic. And then this is how it looks in EEP 2D, 2D design mode. Um, yeah, what we did is add this fourth track. So we now have two turnouts uh, more than we had in the previous layout. I included these colored numbers again because the uh, yeah the numbers of EEP are sometimes very hard to read but these are the correct numbers. We have uh, four turnouts, the green ones. We have every block a signal. Uh, this is the block signal over here for block one. It has number eight. That can happen. EEP automatically assigns these numbers for us. This is the block signal for block 2 and over here we have the block signal for block 3 and here the block signal for block 4. Then every block also has a memory signal or a control panel signal and these are the four signals that are used for that. They have gotten the numbers 5, 6, 7 and 15. There is a main switch, it has got number 3. There are two train switches now, number 14 and number 4. And then we have these sensors. These sensors over here, they belong to the control panel signals over here. So we have four of those, uh, one, for, one per block over here at the entry of the block over here, over here and over here. There is a special uh, precaution with these. Let's have a look. Here we are inside the editor and let's have a look at this uh, sensor here at block 1. Let me zoom in uh, and let me select it and right click to have a look at the properties and we see the tick mark here and with end of train. And we can also see that, uh, it, uh, that at the signal itself if I would take the tick mark off then you can see that this circle here at the uh, sensor is larger. And end of train, that is a picture with a smaller circle, so we can easily distinguish between front of train or end of train. Why do we need end of train in this case? Well, because uh, a train comes driving in over here, and at the same time a train may be wanting to depart from here. So we really have to wait until the last wagon has passed this sensor and then the turnout will be released by Lua and only then that opposing traffic train can depart of course. Otherwise we would get a collision if we have put that sensor on the head of the train. This is always a good practice to use end of train when you have opposing traffic. This is the complete Lua code 
opened in Notepad++, the editor I always prefer to use. Let's have a look how we can configure this layout. In the previous layout we already had train number one and we gave it the name Steam. In this layout that first on off switch has number 14, so that's what I uh, wrote down over here. The block number we will write that down when we initialize the layout when we place the train, so that's for later. Then we added a second train, uh, I gave it the name blue, because it is blue. That name uh, has no purpose at all other than just showing that name in the Lua event window. This train now has on off switch number 4, yeah, the switch is actually an EEP signal but it is used as a on off switch. Um, so let's have a look at the allowed blocks. We also have of course now two lines of those because you have one of these lines for every train. The steam train is allowed on track 1 with a waiting time of 20 seconds. Yeah, that's because it's a railway station. I want it to stop there for a while. It's not allowed in block 2, also not allowed in block 3, and it is allowed in block 4 without any waiting time. The other train, the blue one, it is allowed in block 2 without a wait time, and then in block 3 I gave it a wait time, just for fun, let's assume that there is a, an industry going on there, and that uh, uh, cargo train has to stop there. It's not allowed in block 4. We do not have any two-way blocks on this layout, all zeros there. Then we simply fill in the block uh, signal numbers, and we can see here on the left which numbers these are, 8, 9, 10 and 13. And we also fill in the numbers of the signals that are on our control panel, the memory signals 5, 6, 7 and 15. This is all straightforward and now we have to do a little thinking or at least take care that we do not make mistakes. The routes that we are going to define, well obviously I want a train to be able to drive from block 1 to block 4 and if we want the train to go there we have to switch two turnouts. Turnout number 2 has to be switched on straight and turnout number 12 also has to be switched on straight. Well, and that is easy to see here on the left on the layout. Route number 2 is the train going from block 2 to block 3 and we need to switch turnout 1 on branch and also turnout 11 has to be switched on branch. We do exactly the same for the other two routes, uh, the route from 3 to 2, we have to switch two turnouts and just make no errors here, otherwise it ends up at the wrong block and you will have terrible trouble or collisions. So the only thing to watch out for here is to be very precise and have a good look and maybe another look and maybe a third look that you know exactly that the turnouts are okay. And um, well, then we have the uh, main switch uh, that in this layout is number 3. And in the previous video we already explained about these uh, signal states. Uh, they are needed because you might be using different types of signals that have different on-off codes. This is all that there is to it. Let's have a look at how this is driving. And just to have a look at how to place trains and initialize the layout, uh, let's delete one train, uh, because this placement of, I'm going to delete this one, delete, yeah, there it is, gone, uh, because this placement of trains is yeah, the most tricky part of what we need to do uh, to initialize the layout and be able to start driving. I want to place a train, I want it to go to this red signal, so let's first have a look into the mode where that pre-signal is, yeah it's not, not uh, uh, it's a bit too close but that's just for demonstration purposes, uh, it is all more or less at the middle of that block. 
now that we know that I'm going to place the train here before it because I want it to drive to that signal. So let's find a train. Let me bring this a bit up and then we are going to have a look for a diesel train. Standard gauge locomotives, diesel and I don't know which one it is, maybe even the top one. Yeah, that is a nice one. Let's place that and then in front of that pre-signal somewhere over there. Let me give it the name blue. There is this uh, train. Uh, it seems to have the wrong orientation, so I'm going to turn it around. Yeah, that looks good. Just a little test if it is driving forward when I give it a small forward speed. Yes, it is. So let me stop there. The pre-signal is there, so we are safe. I like to add a couple of wagons too. Let's have a look for some wagons. Uh, locomotives off, wagons on, freight, cars, and well, we are not going to spend a lot of time. Let's just do three of these or maybe two. I don't know how large they are. We do not need to be very long. Well, I think we can have three. Now I'm going to couple them to the train by simply driving backwards a little bit, very slowly, and uh, pick them up. It doesn't drive, why not? I have no idea. Maybe because I have to put that signal on green? No. Oh, because I did not click the locomotive. Yeah, that's what I always forget. Click that locomotive and then, yeah, then start to drive backward. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, there we are. Uh, and then stop. And now I'm going to give it a speed. Let's say this is a little bit faster than the steam engine that I put on 30. Let's put this train on 40. It is going to drive. It will meet the pre-signal yeah, somewhat about now. And then it is going to stop. Well, that's, uh, that's done. Now we have our trains. And yeah, let's now initialize the software. We have to tell Lua that this train is there. Yeah, let's click uh, the Lua uh, listing window open and let's have a look where we are. The uh, passenger train is clearly uh, located here in block 4. So we have to change this to place trains is 1. Here, yeah, that's done. Then I'm going to tell that the passenger train is in block 4 and the blue train is in block 3 and that should do it. So I'm now going to reload this script and nothing will happen apparently. Well, something did happen. Uh, our event window shows that it has found a blue train in block 3 and a steam train in block 4. That looks correct. So let's now make place trains 0 again. We are done with placing trains and we can go drive. This is 0. No other changes needed. Reload this script and we are ready to drive. Let's put the main switch on by pressing shift and left click, nothing happens because our train switches are still off. Well, let's start with the blue train first, the, the latest edition. Yeah, there it goes. And I did not give it a waiting time over here, so it should immediately drive through. And when I start the steam engine, I will wait a little bit because I first want to see if that blue train is really driving through without a waiting time. And then if I start, oh, apparently, no, yeah, there it goes. And if I now start the steam engine, yeah, of course, it cannot go because the track is occupied. It is all taken care of automatically, no collisions. And the sensor that we placed here, is looking at the end of this train. So if that last wagon has passed, only then the steam engine will go. That should be now. Yeah, there it goes. The steam engine, we gave it a... Oh, didn't... Uh, had I forgotten to give that uh, diesel train 
uh, the 20 minute 20 second waiting time apparently um, well the steam engine I gave it a waiting time of 20 seconds so let's have a look if that still happens uh, well I remember now I did that in notepad but I <laughs> forgot to copy paste the notepad code over here inside EEP so maybe even the steam doesn't have a waiting time yeah it has it has uh, we can of course check that and we can also change that oh yeah it has a waiting time of 15 well let's make that 20 and I also like to just for fun try out give that diesel a 20 second waiting time so now reload see what happens uh, and then we will stop this video when we have seen that this works correct it should arrive now in this block more yeah when the final wagon has passed we should be able to see here in our event window yeah there it is the blue train arrived in block 3 and it now has a waiting time of 20 seconds yeah all seems to work perfectly well so let's stop the uh, running of the trains always good practice to turn off the main switch and then wait until all the trains have come to a stop at their red signal and then exit EEP because then you know that everything has been saved correctly and when you start up later it will all be fine thank you for watching in the next video we are going to add a third block here over uh, here at our railway station and it will become a two-way traffic block that is a new challenge